Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benin. There is breaking news coming out of Russia. The Ukrainians have managed to get a drone inside of St. Petersburg, Russia. Not hard to do. See, as drones are not that big and harder to detect and can fly at low altitudes there. And, uh, and bombed a residential area there. The Ukrainian Armed Forces, according to news.ru, uh, says are attacking St. Petersburg, where it was the strike, and how many died, and where were they aiming? Uh, this comes out March 2nd, 2024, and let's just take a look at the article here. What is known about the UAV strike in St. Petersburg report that the drone presumably launched by the Ukrainian Armed Forces hit a house, 161 on uh, Pekraskovitsky, excuse me, Piskarvisky Avenue, the first reports of an approaching UAV arrived at about 7 a.m. The device was moving from Lake Ladoga in the direction of the village of uh, Uglova. The explosion occurred around 7.10 a.m. According to MASH, there were about uh, 3.5 kilograms of explosives on board the drone. It crashed between the floors of a five-story residential building, knocking out glazing and damaging balconies. They were also looking for a second UAV, which allegedly fell in the area. Uh, uh, and the uh, Fotanka publication writes that rumors about a second drone over St. Petersburg were not confirmed. A number of media outlets claimed that a powerful explosion was heard over the residential areas before the UAV fell. It is assumed that the drone was intercepted by air, by, by air defense. The Russian Ministry of Defense did not comment on this information. Uh, says here how many died. I don't know if anybody actually died or not in this. Uh, there were no casualties as a result of the UAV strike. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, this is the building right here. They're showing the picture there. Did quite a bit of damage, like I said, to the balconies and stuff. So it had pretty intensive explosives on for such a little bitty drone uh, inside of St. Petersburg. But it's just letting us know that Nothing is safe inside of Russia, and after we reported the other day what the Germans are doing, I can only imagine what's going to be coming next, uh, Russia's way, in the not-so-distant future. Blaming it on Ukraine, of course, but Russia knows different, and that's the real big issue. ABC News is reporting Biden, Biden says U.S. will drop aid to Gaza. Let's listen in on what they have to say. a deadly stampede and Israeli gunfire just as aid trucks were arriving. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge from the region tonight. Just 24 hours after the Israeli military opened fire amid a deadly crush of people desperate for food aid in Gaza, President Biden tonight announcing the US will begin airdropping supplies into the Gaza Strip. People are so desperate that uh, uh, innocent people got caught in a terrible war, unable to feed their families, and you saw the response when they tried to get aid in. With half a million Gazans on the brink of famine, the UN saying at least 10 children have starved to death. Jordan and other countries already airdropping aid. The president acknowledging not enough is getting in. Innocent lives are on the line and children's lives are on the line. Tonight, condemnation and calls for an investigation into what was supposed to be a humanitarian mission in northern Gaza, when more than 100 Palestinians were... I mean, what do you expect? What, what can you expect when people have been starved to death for five months? Locked into a city, a city that's sitting in a desert, no less. And, you know, what little bit of food is growing in the fields you couldn't get to if you wanted to because you'd be shot and killed. Um, you know, this is the worst humanitarian crisis in modern times or going back even for the last couple of centuries. I don't know of any time in history there's been a worse humanitarian crisis uh, with, with a, a nation so big. And it's not like Israel's a gigantic nation, but they got the back end of the United States of America sending more bombs in there. That to me, so it's just hypocrisy to drop aid in there. It's kind of like baiting the deer before you go and kill the guys. And, and then expect something normal to come out of it after you've done, done all this kind of evil. The only normal thing to do is to stop arming Israel and pull Israel's armed military out of this area, ground their planes, you know, somebody ought to do a no-fly zone over Israel. I mean, really and truly, I mean, when is, when is enough going to be enough? How many more people have to die? And all the claim you're rooting out Hamas, you don't even know who, who Hamas is in Gaza anymore. Nobody would.
This, this is really the crime of the century, without a doubt. And because of so many politicians paid, bought and paid for by dollars coming from this area, or those that are very supportive of this area, they dare not say a word. What a shame. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Check out our Patreon channel. Uh, I am really this month here. I'm going to be doing a lot of deep insights over on Patreon. And uh, I, I just put one up there today that I think you'll find fascinating. So it's patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. And uh, I think it's going to be a blessing for many people. And also, we had a handful of people at our prayer meeting Zoom the other day. I'll remind you about that as well. Stephen Benun, B-E-N-N-U-N.com. Uh, I will be doing a meeting uh, this coming Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. God bless you. Thank you for listening.